thousands of years, petroleum has seeped through the Earth's crust in many places, where evaporation and oxidation gradually change it to sticky bitumen or pitch. Natural gas and mineral waters frequently bubble to the surface with the oil and give only a hint of possible underground supplies. Legend and authentic record agree that men have used petroleum in some form since ancient times. Genesis contains this account. And God said unto Noah, Make thee an ark of gopher wood. Room shalt thou make in the ark, and shalt pitch it within and without with pitch. Early settlers in North America found that Indians had various uses for petroleum, obtained by skimming pools where it had seeped. They put the oil in a blanket through which most of the water was strained so that a small quantity of petroleum remained. The Indians employed this crude oil for medicines, liniment, and hairdressing, a mere suggestion of the many cosmetics and medicines that would be devised later. Before long, peddlers built up an active business selling this liquid obtained from brine wells and seepages and commonly termed rock oil. The root words of petroleum are, in fact, petra, meaning rock, and oleum, meaning oil. Wonderful medicinal virtues were claimed for the oil, which had a wide sale, especially in country districts. In May 1859, Colonel Edwin L. Drake began to drill a well near Titusville, Pennsylvania, after many long, discouraging delays. A few years earlier, experimenters had obtained from rock oil a liquid similar to coal oil which was distilled from coal and used in lamps as fuel. By drilling this well, Drake and his financial backers hoped to find an adequate supply of crude oil without having to skim it from pools of water or extract it from brine wells. To prevent the flow of surface water into the hole, Colonel Drake and his driller, Uncle Billy Smith, devised a method of driving a pipe into the hole as drilling progressed. This drive pipe was the forerunner of the steel casing used in all modern oil and gas wells. When the bit struck hard rock, special tools patterned after those used by brine well borers in exploring for salt were hooked to a walking beam, which moved them up and down in the hole. A small steam engine at the rear of the rig supplied power to operate the walking beam. Drillers at that time believed that it was necessary to turn the tools in every direction to assure a round hole. Uncle Billy and his son were drilling at a depth of 69 feet on the afternoon of August 27, 1859, when oil suddenly filled the pipe to the level of the surface of the ground. After pulling the tools, they bailed out several buckets of oil. The well did not flow and its production was not large, probably about 25 barrels a day according to various estimates. But nearby mill hands who rushed to the site in amazement could hardly believe the spectacle of oil coming from a well like water. The event had historical significance because the drilling of this shallow well introduced new factors throughout the world with respect to its supply of fuels and lubricants. A pitcher pump was rigged up and put to work at this pioneer well. When Colonel Drake arrived, he had dressed for the great occasion in his silk topper and Prince Albert. Meanwhile, several barrels had been filled with oil, a 
although it was worth about $40 a barrel, Drake never became wealthy from his achievement. Nevertheless, he started the first oil boom. Enterprising pioneer oil men who could not obtain steam drilling equipment rigged up ingenious but primitive mechanical devices known as spring poles to drill their wells. Of course, drilling with this improvised cantilever was painfully slow, depending upon the spring of a sapling to bounce the tools in the well. The Chinese used this principle centuries ago in drilling brine wells for salt. These early oil producers also faced difficulties in moving their oil to market. Teamsters demanded two and a half to five dollars per barrel for eight to twenty mile hauls. Barrel makers too enjoyed an era of prosperity. In the spring, freshets carried barrel laden barges down Oil Creek to the Allegheny River, where their cargoes were transferred to river boats. The petroleum industry progressed. Oil field development moved steadily south and west from tree-covered Pennsylvania hills. At one time, fantastic forests of closely spaced wooden derricks sprang up. Then as the search for new fields grew more urgent, the industry reached the prairies. Wells were spaced in long, orderly array. Even cities were invaded with modern steel derricks which thrust their crown blocks 